Mr. Stoltenberg, like many Kurds, I can only shed tears of rage these days because of the cruel world in which we live. But nothing is more disturbing than your recent statement in the face of rising deaths and destructions brought about by the Turkish invasion of Afrin. You have said that Turkey is an ally that suffers the most from terrorism. All nations have the right to defend themselves, but this has to be done in a proportionate and measured way. Mr. Stoltenberg, pause for a moment about what you have said. Is a NATO built to provide for and protect peace, security, freedom, and democratic values through peaceful means to manage crises both regional and global? I'm afraid Turkey, a long-standing member of NATO, is contradicting your established mission and brutalizing Kurds who have driven away ISIS and established a popular democracy in Syria. Kurds who have carried the brunt of the anti-ISIS fight are now being terrorized by Turkish aggression. What is shocking to me is that you have endorsed and lent your support to the invasion in opposition to, if not open hostility, to Kurds in Syria under the pretext of terrorism. Mr. Stoltenberg, you have not only created an aura of legitimacy for Erdogan, a tyrant, but also given the invader a respectable niche, a man who is responsible for putting 70,000 people, including Kurdish parliamentarians, academics, journalists, teachers, and even soldiers behind prison bars, all charged with terrorism. Erdogan has mobilized ultra-right nationalists and jihadists and attacked another region beyond its borders. To him, non-conformists and non-Islamist Kurds everywhere are terrorists. Kurds in Syria, who valiantly fought and defeated ISIS, in his words, are barbarians, murderers, thieves and rapists, collaborators in a postmodern that are bringing Western influence to the Middle East. Mr. Stoltenberg, isn't it preposterous, if not pusillanimous, to put such a man above your NATO's mission and to allow him to discredit and smear Kurds through his false accusations and fabrications. Mr. Stoltenberg, who has used brute force? Were monstrosities and wars of extermination against Armenians and Kurds were perpetrated and it's still being denied? Who killed Hiran Dink? the Armenian journalist in 2007, who killed the prominent Kurdish human rights lawyer Tahir Elchi in broad daylight in 2015, who harbored and funded Islamist terrorists, who savagely attacked and assassinated three Kurdish activist women in Paris, whose security forces beat up peaceful demonstrators in Washington, D.C. in 2017, who, except the racist gray wolves, attacked the Office of Africa, the Turkish Cypriot newspaper, for criticizing the Turkish military offensive against Kurds in Syria. Mr. Stoltenberg, are you simply re-echoing the tried, tired, and stifling language of hypocritical diplomacy to justify Erdogan's invasion? Are you satisfied with the way the invasion in Afrin is going? Have you looked at the proportions of the devastations in Afrin? How many people should the Turkish guns kill? Perhaps whole communities and villages before you object? 
Have you seen horrific pictures of what the Turkish army did in Kurdish towns in Turkey? How many houses should be destroyed? How many thousands of people should be displaced? How many terrified children should live and die under constant fear of Turkish aerial bombardments? How many should be maimed and injured? How many people should die of starvation soon? Do you expect another genocidal war to be perpetrated like what befell the Ezadis? How many insults should Erdogan heap upon Europeans and apologists like you to know what proportionality means? How many signs should you see that the region is plunging into yet another humanitarian crisis? Mr. Stoltenberg, why are you denying the real culprit of the dirty war, a war that has criminalized the people's dream for the creation of a plural, secular democracy in Syria. You probably expect the Kurds in Syria to give out their land to their mortal enemy so that the Turkish invasion is more measured in your order. Mr. Stoltenberg, despite your metaphors of proportion and measured. The moral decadence in your statement of support for Turkish invasion is profoundly disturbing, if not a sign of NATO's schizophrenic politics, of allowing a despot to destroy innocent lives and democratic ideals and ideas. What is Indeed, troubling is that you are not taking Turkey in your direction, but Turkey is taking you in its direction, and that is that of an Islamist fascist path. Mr. Stoltenberg, are you holding Erdogan's olive branch in the middle of the burning olive fields of Afrin? What a disgrace.